Hey everyone, this is Jen Kiaba for Beneath the Surface, and today I want to talk to you about how we go about finding our voice as artists and what that journey can look like. So I'm going to use my story to illustrate my personal journey in uncovering my voice and hope that it can help you in your journey as well, identifying where you're at, where you're going, and um, also kind of teach you to be kind to yourself while you're in process. So I grew up in the Unification Church as I've shared in um, other posts before and that meant that in order to be the ideal child that we were all supposed to be, I had to suppress my voice and also suppress my feelings around my voice. So it took me a very long time into my adulthood in order to actually begin to identify some of those feelings and then be able to kind of sculpt that into an artistic practice. But when I was in my early 20s, I was beginning to explore photography. And I knew that I wanted to say something, but I didn't know how. Um, I think that there was a lot of fear in terms of trying to protect myself and perhaps not necessarily being ready to confront that which I had grown up with and also the people that had enforced that culture. So for a long time, I found myself creating work that um, in a very kind of like, <sighs> outside way was trying to address my feelings and one of the things that I was really drawn to at the time was this concept of fairy tales because it spoke of this sense of another world. I was especially interested in The Wizard of Oz and also Alice in Wonderland. The thing about these particular fairy tales that really interested me was this idea of, uh, like I said, another world. Um, and then I was particularly drawn to that borderland, that space between the world that we know and then this other world. And I wasn't really sure which side I existed on. I, I tended to think maybe I had grown up in the Oz or the Wonderland, um, that dangerous place that I needed to get out of. And so I was always exploring images that spoke to what that border was like or coming in or out of these different spaces. Um, but I wasn't very articulate with it. And so there, there was just a lot of experimentation and there was a lot of frustration because I felt like I had something uh, more important to say and there was, there was kind of a rawness that wanted to get out but that I wasn't allowing to get out. And so uh, it took me a long time to get to a point where I felt like I had that aha moment. Um, and in, in the interim, I was also studying with other photographers, I was studying a lot about what happened to me. So again, as somebody that grew up in an extreme religious group that um, you know many people consider a cult, myself included, it was very important for me to uncover uh, that, that story outside of the context of the art because it, I needed to articulate it to myself um, in order for it to flow into the art. And there was a long time where I, I wasn't willing to confront it. I was not willing to say, this is who I am and this is where I came from, um, in fact. And I think that this is true for anybody that has experienced um, any kind of pain or trauma that is outside of what society is comfortable talking about. We, uh, we shut it down within ourselves because we know that it's not, it's not acceptable, it's not polite dinner conversation. Um, you know, I, I still don't go around introducing myself being like, hi, I'm Jen, I grew up in a cult and I'm weird and I've got pain. Um, but as I've created art around it, I've, I've had to get to a point where I'm more comfortable saying like, this is who I am and this is where this art is coming from. But I had to take that time to um, heal myself to a certain point and be gentle with myself before I could create that work and then have that conversation. So I, I want to um, really highlight how important it is to give yourself that space, give yourself that kindness, um, don't force the work. So I want to share with you an image that kind of became this, uh, this tipping point for me. Um, like I said, I had been studying other 
under other artists um, and I had also been doing a lot of like personal healing and uncovering and uh, I came back from a workshop in Colorado and I was working with a model down at the Hudson River and it was towards the end of our shoot and I was creating work that really to me was about um, feeling trapped and wanting so badly to be able to say what it was I needed to say, but um, still not really knowing how to articulate it. Um, so there were a lot of images that came out of that day that are this figure kind of like fighting um, her way out of various things. There's one image particularly that I called superstructures. Um, and that I think was a good indication of how I was feeling at the time. But one of the last images of the day was um, kind of this impromptu thing, I asked the model if she would be comfortable wading into the water. Um, and I gave her this big piece of driftwood, and so she was standing there, um, kind of like holding it as a staff, and I was like, you know what, I want you to wear it like a burden. You know, wear it like you would be carrying um, buckets of water, or, you know, frankly, like you, you are um, bearing your cross. Um, and so I took this photograph and I went back to my studio afterwards and I saw that final image. It's, you know, this young woman in a white dress standing in the water bearing a cross. And the title of that image came to me in that moment. I, I just looked at it and I said, this is called Burdens of a White Dress. And I knew that that was what I had to explore. It was like everything culminated in that final moment in the studio and I said, this is it, this is what I have to say, this is what I have to explore. Now again, it took me almost 10 years to get to that point, um, but it was, it was that moment where I knew this was the thesis of my story, so to speak. I had come to a point where I was hesitantly ready to start talking about it. And then after that, it was like the floodgates opened and this work poured out of me in um, almost kind of a frenetic way. It was like something gripped me and I had to get the work out. And this is gonna sound vulgar, but it was almost like I had to vomit the work out um, because I had been suppressing this anguish for so many years, I had been suppressing my story um, and I, I had then, you know, taken the time to gently try to heal myself to the point where it was like, oh, you know, we've uncovered the source and we have to, we have to get this out. You know, we have to almost like extract it surgically. Um, so my advice to you is if you're struggling to find your voice or to find that core of who you are as an artist, is to look inward and think about what is it that you're most scared to say? Um, what is it that would be the most devastating for you to talk about? And I'm not saying that you have to go out there and like tear down your world and tear down your life and you know point fingers, but ask yourself, what is it that you're hiding the most in your life? And that's where your work is going to come from. That's where your genuine work comes from. Um, so for me, I felt this need not only to protect myself, but to protect my parents and protect, um, you know, the authority structure that I had grown up under and that I had grown up to fear. Um, so, you know, that that young self within me was terrified to share this work or to talk about what had happened to me because there was this real fear of being punished, um, not just by um, adults, you know, as a young self, but also like, oh my God, there's this institution that could come after me. So for me, the, um, the fear, there was, there was real consequences behind the fear um, and there were real people that I could hurt. And so I, I completely understand if there is work that you feel like you need to bring to life but are too scared um, and you're swallowing back because you're afraid of the consequences. And so you're holding it right here. And that's, you know, when you start to feel that, that pain, almost like that you've been holding back tears for too long, that's where your story is as an artist. And that's, that's where you need to spend the time 
cultivating that relationship with yourself and your work. So I know that this is a longer video than usual and it's a little more raw than some of the stuff that we've talked about before, but I hope that this is very helpful for you in your development and in your exploration. And I, I truly hope that you spend that time with yourself and with your medium to be able to feel like you can speak truthfully because there are too many times in our lives where we suppress that truth because we're afraid of it. You know, I, I was creating work in my hidden sketchbooks when I was in high school. That is so similar to the work that I've created now 15 years later. Um, and it was a decade and a half of me suppressing that. And I hope that if there is a truth that that was trying to blossom in your life that you've held back from expressing, you let yourself be authentically present with it and, and let it come forth in your work. Um, I, I truly believe that that's, that is the only way to live as a human being as a, and as an artist. Um, and like I said before, I understand that there are consequences and that there are fears. Um, but hopefully what we can do is create safe spaces for ourselves in order to bring that work to life. But that is a conversation for another day and another video. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, I would love to talk about this more in the group. So if you have questions, comments, or if something has uh, a light bulb has gone off in your head, I would love to hear about it. So I look forward to talking to you.